This is the Xiaomi Mi Band 4. It's an inexpensive fitness tracker that offers some seriously impressive features for an even more impressive price. I've been using mine for the past two months, and here's why I think you should probably pick one up too. Having used the Mi Band 2 for a long time before this, I knew what I was getting into. It's not an Apple Watch killer, but it is an inexpensive and really useful fitness tracker that can pretty easily double up as a smartwatch replacement. As soon as you pick the Mi Band 4 up, the first thing you notice is just how good it feels. Unlike previous generations, this band has a fully glass display, which considering the price is amazing. With what they call 2.5D curved edges, a full touch capability, and a capacitive button at the bottom, it's fair to say there's nothing left out here. There's a shiny plastic frame surrounding the edges of the glass which will help protect it from dings and bumps, which I can say is a lifesaver. The amount of doors and surfaces that I've caught this on, without this plastic ridge, it would probably be broken at this point. And it also helps blend the screen into the strap of the band, and with such a nice feeling silicon band, it is hard to go wrong. Xiaomi have put a lot of thought into comfort and ease of use here, like how the bottom of the device sticks out more than the band, so if you wear it really far down your wrist you can still move your hand freely, or the comfort factor of the locking mechanism that doesn't poke you at all. There's some clear thought gone into the comfort here, and it's what makes this band so good. The whole device is relatively taller than I expected, so it does stick out a little bit more on your wrist than I'd like it to, but I can forgive this because it is easy to get used to. The display is possibly the best bit about this band. It's a full colour OLED with a resolution of 120 by 240 and a really good brightness range. With automatic brightness adjustment during the night, the ability to change the overall brightness manually without touching your phone, it's pretty hard to find anything to complain about here. The included watch faces look great on this display. My personal favourite are this orange one or this blue one, but there's more options that are more fitness related. All of the stock faces look great on this display and it's hard to go wrong, but if you want to spice it up you can download some user created watch faces from the app, but unfortunately those options aren't really as good looking in my opinion. The great bit about it is that you don't have to use this as a fitness tracker. It can also double as a regular watch, which is something a lot of other fitness trackers in this price range leave out. With automatic display activation whenever you tilt the band towards you, it's easy to forget that this is a fitness tracker at times. Around the back there's two contacts for charging, as well as the heart rate sensor. Now charging this tracker isn't the best in my opinion, you have to take it out of the strap and attach it to the mini charging dock, which makes me worry for the durability of the strap over time, but having said that, I charge this watch probably less than once a month, so I doubt it'll become an issue anytime soon. The heart rate sensor has been significantly improved here, at least in my upgrade from version 2. Accuracy and reliability are the two main upgrades here, and it's really easy to use if you want to check your heart rate. As long as the band is strapped down properly, it gets a solid reading each time, as well as some automatic reading options for workouts or sleeping, which we will get into a little bit later. Speaking of workouts, you have a lot of options to choose from for tracking. And the best bit about it is that you don't even need your phone to activate a workout. I do a lot of swimming, and although it only seems to recognise front crawl in my experience, it's still useful to know how long you were swimming for, and when it does record you doing front crawl, it's useful to know how many lengths you did, and how many... crawls you did. And what do you call them? I don't know. There's a clever little anti-touch lock so that you can't mess up the data without swiping up and then down, which is especially useful for swimming because when you're in the pool, water can cause the display to seem like it's just been touched. For running or walking, its tracking is really great. You don't have to fuss, it's as simple as pressing a begin workout button, and the band does it all for you. No need to have your phone around at all. The haptics on this band can alert you of notifications, wake you up as an alarm, or even be used as part of the workout routines, and they're great. With the second generation, I found them to be a little bit rattly, but it's been significantly improved here, to the point where they feel just as good as some modern day phones. And they use quite a lot too, which I like. The built-in OS is nice, but it's not perfect. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of good here, but there's little things like the scrolling animation which just seem a little bit jarring, and they kind of take away from the good here. But remember, it all links to the Mi Fit app, which is where you can view just about everything this band records. From step data to day streaks and everything in between, it's really not restricted at all. Some of my favourite features include the ability to reorganise the order of your pages on the band from within the app, and the ability to change from automatic heart rate measurements to only sleep tracking to all of the time. You have absolute control over what this watch records and how it does it. For app notifications, you can choose per app enabling or disabling, and even choose to only get alerts when the phone display is off, which is seriously useful. With timers, stopwatches, alarms, and the ability to ping your phone over Bluetooth range, there is a lot of good stuff on this band which I really like. You can even use it as a music controller, which, although it's a little bit slow and a bit laggy, and extremely weird on such a small display to view the title of a song, it's still a cool addition. Something I'm really annoyed about is the lack of NFC payment capabilities with this smart band. There's been a lot of talk about being able to do this, but unfortunately it's only available on the Chinese version, so if you buy it in the UK without actually buying the specific Chinese version, 
you're not going to be able to do that. And even if you did, I'm not 100% sure if you can actually use Google Pay with it. So if you read about NFC payments being available anywhere online, you will have to buy the Chinese version to get this functionality. And it's a little bit annoying because I was under the impression that I could use this for contactless payments with my Google Pay, but neither of those things are possible. Something else I wish this band had was the ability to create alarms without needing to connect to your phone. It's just about the only thing that this watch is missing. But once they're set up, you don't need to worry about changing them, as you can enable or disable alarms from within the band's menu. It seems like there's been a lot of effort put into making this band really convenient and making it a whole lot better than the previous generations, and it really has paid off. I've been using the Mi Band 4 for two months, and in that time it's proved itself to be a really impressive successor to its previous generations. With a 20 or more day battery life, such a good screen, and all of those features packed into a band that costs less than £40, it's hard to argue against buying one. It's good for just about anyone, whether you want a cheap smartwatch that alerts you for notifications, or a fitness tracker for you to log all your steps and workouts. This band fits so many different use cases, which is why I love it so much.